Peace and welcome to season four of Artistry, where art meets industry. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to Artistry Podcast, where we are joined by visual and performing artists or arts administrators to discuss their creative journey. If this sounds like something that piques your interest, please be sure to subscribe to learn more about us and our guests. If you are already a subscriber, welcome back. And boy, do we have a jam-packed season for you. We are celebrating our fourth season, and we have been fortunate enough to fill these episodes with artists we have personal connections with. And today's guest is no different. Yeah, man. Excited, Um, excited. All right. So uh, you want to tell them a little bit about him? I I don't want to, you know. I feel like you're flowing right now doing your, your black Barbara Walters. You know what well, I'm saying? you know. You know how okay. we do. Right. So today's <laughs> guest is Anthony Christopher Brown, also known as Tony Concept, a multi-dimensional artist and designer. Tony was born in New Orleans and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. He studied film animation and earned his BFA from Pratt. A fellow alum. Okay, all right. Brooklyn's in the house. Uh, he is tr- a trained visual artist and creative director, producing works that center around iconic portraits with a mixed media st- street art aesthetic. In 2011, Tony began a signature style of art expressed as trap art. Today, uh, Tony was able to present his work to First Lady Michelle Obama on her guided tour of works featured at the New Museum in New York. He has been featured in publications like Vice, Fader Magazine, and others, and has worked with MTV Networks, Nike, Adidas, Fast Company, Beats by Dre, Jabot, and many, many others. Please welcome to the show, folks, Tony. (laughs) Tony. Yes, yes, please, 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 family. Man, look, man, I just want to just even before we get started, just say thank you, you know, to you guys for having me on the platform. You know, we we long time peoples and uh, you guys have always been a a, a North Star in terms of togetherness and love and and all that good stuff, you know, which helps me with my wife and all of these things. You know, I have something to look, look and aspire towards, man. So I just want to send my gratitude and appreciation to y'all. You know, to make you run my mascara. You You better stop. Hold hold up. Let me also let me also shout my my DC fam because in in the intro, you know, I I speak about New Orleans and in the Chuck, but you know, I got my DC roots out in Northeast Benning Road. You know, my father's family, man. So so we linked up with the DC tank too, man. So yeah, DMV in the house. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's been twenty plus years. You know, it has. You, knew you when you came, because you came in after us mm-hmm. and right. yeah. lit the, literally hit the ground running. So kudos to oh. you and all the success that you've seen in the, these past 20 plus years. Man, that's humble thanks and appreciation. You know, I, it's so, good to to see our class of, 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 of family, you know, all doing things in their respective fields in, a, in an amazing way. Mm-hmm. So we've been blessed to, to have a, a network of folks that are all pushing you know, pushing their art and, and pushing their beliefs and the things that they, yeah. you know, aspire for still to this day. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we started this. We started, this was birthed during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, this was our way to connecting with our friends. And pretty mm-hmm. much for the four seasons we've been doing this is still just connecting with friends and seeing what they've been up to and learning more about them. Because we've all hung out, but we mm-hmm. don't necessarily know the journey. And so right. that's why we decided to do this platform. Yeah, man. Oh, man. It's excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to yeah. throw in some questions, you know, just to find out more about your creative journey. As you mentioned, so you were born in New Orleans, but raised mm-hmm. in North Carolina. So South when Carolina. would you say, I mean, South, South Carolina, Carolina yeah. whatever, I see. Charles, Charleston, South Carolina. My bad for everybody that's from Charleston. I'm sorry. I was in Chucktown, the Chucktown, one time for the Chucktown. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, you know, actually, was, yeah. 
Charlemagne actually went to my high school. He, he Charlemagne oh, the God. He yeah. graduated. I think he was in there like a year or two before me or something like that. Wow. But he Stratford High School. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what's up. All right. Go, go. So tell us about your first interaction with the arts. Was it visual arts? Was it yeah. performing arts? You know, um, man, this it's it's um it's interesting. I, when I think about my first foray into the arts, I think of Mardi Gras. You know, I think mm-hmm. uh, my early childhood memories of wanting to go to Mardi Gras, not necessarily to catch the beads and, and to hear the bands, which, you know, we all love to do in New Orleans. But it was really to see the floats and to see the artwork, um, you know, the, 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 the way people were dressed up, the, the, the colors, everyone were where they uh the uh, purple, gold, and green, you know, and just to see the city turn into a, a large piece of artwork, you know, was was kind of like the, the beginning. And then from that, you know, I, I often go back to Beach Street and, and break in and movies like Wild Style, you know, where I really, um, I think that's really what formed, you know, who I am today, you know, having those early impressions of seeing graffiti art and not having it in my city. You know, we didn't have a vibrant graffiti art scene in New Orleans, but I would look at all of these films and just really, you know, man, I want to go paint a train or I want to, you know, um, you know, um, you know, experience, you know, art on that level. And for us in New Orleans, it was more through the fashion, you know, it was a lot of, you know, drawing on our jeans and airbrushing jackets and different things, you know, creating my own fashion and different things like that. So that was kind of my first foray into it, you know, and into to, to having an appreciation for art. Right. Oh, oh. You know, um, from there, did you take lessons in high school? Like, were you taking visual art in high school? Because also, I know we didn't mention that you are a dancer. Yes. Well. Yeah. B-boy for life. You know what I mean? And again, that goes back to those er- that was those early influences. I think I've done a little bit of each one of the four hip hop elements. You know, I got my turntables behind me. You know, I don't know if I'm going to go and spit any bars for, for Stan, you know what I'm saying, and get ate up. But, you know, um, freestyling and rhyming was always a part of the math. And, you know, that's how I got my name, Concept, through break. Well, actually, Concept, I got the name Concept through writing graffiti. My first graffiti name was Khan, K-H-A-N. But everybody kept saying my K-H's was trash. So I switched it to C-O-N. Khan, it still was the same sound. And then that, in turn, turned into Concept as a, as a B-boy name. But, um, you know, in my earlier days, man, you know, I was an only child and, um, you know, my father was absent for, for a little while, a period in my life. So my mom, you know, f- had to find a way to wrangle me. And the, the way she could wrangle me was really through the arts. You know, she knew if she dropped a, some markers in front of me and bought some poster boards home that keep me busy for a couple of hours. And, uh, you know, I would do summer programs, you know, the boys home and, you know, different things like that where. Um, you know, I could do art education over the summer, but it wasn't until I met my uh, my 12th grade art teacher, Miss Bonnie Stabler. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this woman um, took interest in me and she brought me to New York for the first time. And, um, you know, I, I remember seeing Renee Magritte, Salvador Dali, you know, um, and, you know, some of the, the greats and the artists that I had, you know, on my wall in high school seeing their work for the first time in the galleries and and it, and it sparked emotional thing in me like my eyes kind of watered up and uh, my art teacher walked up to me and and I, I i couldn't really i didn't know what it meant i didn't understand what was happening to me when i saw the work in person but uh you know she grabbed me and was like you know you, you know you, you should do art you should go to art school you know what i'm saying and uh you know, it's funny, the po- the piece that we have up right now, that persistence of memory, the eye by M- Renee Magritte, you know, it, it finds its way into my work even to this day, I think subconsciously, you know, um, and in, in my own style or my own work. But that that's one of the pieces that really influ- inspired me, the persistence of memory by Renee Magritte. But mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was the beginning. The beginning was uh, getting to New York, going to the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Guggenheim and um you know just just uh then then I was aimed at you know going to art school and, and found my way to Sarasota Florida to Ringling School of Art and Design my first year and um, I was met with some adversity there and, and decided you know it was in my best interest to get to Pratt to Brooklyn 
What yeah. happened in Florida? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I'm so I know, I'm no, that's a that's a, that's a good one, man, and that's a keep it real moment. Um, I was one of two black male freshmen um, at mm -hmm. uh, Ringling, you know, uh, at the time. The school is very, you know, much more diverse than than it was at the time, and and I don't know if you guys seen the movie. Was it Higher Learning? What's the one with Michael Rappaport? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I had one of those type incidents, man. A kid got robbed on my campus because the school was on. Martin Luther King Boulevard. We know Martin Luther King Boulevard is notorious for you know being our our section of the of the of the world and the neighborhoods, and but the the school told it itself to be on Town Miami Trail, which was a street that was way behind the school. That was what they put their address on. So you know this kid parks his car and um, and you know he subsequently gets robbed by some guys up the, up the street in Newtown. He comes back to the campus and. He's he's yelling the N-word and he's gonna kill this N-word and that N-word, you know what I'm saying? Woody Wop. Hard ER, you know what I'm saying? And um mm -hmm. me being one of the only blacks there, I, I had to go outside and confront this guy, man. And uh mm -hmm. I ended up confronting him and security came and it was a whole thing. And uh mm -hmm. and essentially what ended up happening was I ended up finding myself on a panel uh in front of the whole school, you know what I'm saying, talking about race relations and you know, having, uh, you know, people come up to me after telling me how well I articulated and, you know, all this kind of nonsense, man. And, uh, you know, it was at that moment that I decided I needed to go somewhere where, you know, I felt the vibe was was stronger. And, it, you know, I, I had it, that was the X that marked the spot in terms of my time in, in the Deep South, man. You know, coming up in, in Charleston, I dealt with a lot of things along those lines. And, and it was time for me to get around a more liberated uh, mindset of people, you know, and I thought New York was the place for me, especially with my love for, for hip hop and the things that I wanted to do. I knew I could do them there. So that's yeah. just, you know, that's basically what happened. You know, it's funny. It's interesting that you say that because our class, when we came in, I think the first four classes, our class and the class that came behind us, we were the largest black <laughs> student mm, body yeah. that Pratt had mm -hmm. ever seen. Mm -hmm. you know, and and it was a it was a small I mean we what made six per, not even six percent. And uh, le it was less Within, than less yeah. than six percent of the population. Yeah. Of school, of the school population. But we were all everybody knew each other, right? Yeah. Oh man, it, and it was we everyone connected in a way that, you know, even in Florida, you know, I we had Cypher three thousand, which was like you know, me and the, the upperclassmen that were there, all of us were in one, one, you know, uh, apartment, you know what I'm saying? More or less, you know, but uh, when I got to Pratt, you know, meeting, you know, guys um, from the city that, you know, had gotten there, you know, Bone, Will, and all these different, Will and, uh, uh, you know, Henry Rembrandt and a lot of these guys, man, that were from, from the, from the soil there. And then folks from DC, my brother Sky and, you you know you guys it was it was a it was beautiful it's exactly what i needed you know and uh i felt like i had the support system even through the black alumni there you know yeah yeah man yeah it was great memories man. yeah for sure i i definitely um you know i think about like the community that we built at the school and like uh and you know in brooklyn is just one of those places that man is just it's so culturally rich like the mm -hmm. community we were able to build like off campus as well. And some of those, some of that love was spilled on the campus mm -hmm. and vice versa. It was just a really, really dope time and um, to be there. And I feel mm -hmm. like we we caught that last little bit of Brooklyn too before it like- For sure. Yeah, oh, 1, gentrification really, really hit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my homies, man, were actually not, you know, from school, man, I was on Clifton and, you know, I was around the corner, you know what I mean? So I was able to forge friendships with people in the neighborhood. And that was something important to me, you know, because I never liked to feel like I was gentrifying somebody else's spot. I wanted to find uh, some common ground with, with folks who had been there for a number of years, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Shout out to um, Red Rum Republic, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. DFD, Spade, man. salute to you, man. That's all the family, yeah. Beef as well, you know. Yeah. My G, yep. You know, so after, so we go, go to Pratt. Um, mm -hmm. You're studying film animation. Yep, um, I was an illustration major um, initially, and then I switched over to film animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after graduating, what mm -hmm. happened next? What was your Man. first experience? 
you know, interestingly enough, I, I was in film animation and I, and you know, that's always been a love. I think I had an, I, I was an illustration major because I love comic book art and, and, you know, and animation. And, um, you know, that's how I learned how to draw, you know, drawing characters like Spawn and, and, you know, um, uh, image comics and different things like that. And, uh, when I got into the program, I realized like the, you know, these guys all want to go to Pixar. And I realized like, I didn't have any friends within, you know, my classes, like I, there was a big disconnect. I was going out and writing graffiti all night and going to class, you know, with my with paint on my fingers and, you know, kind of not, not dialed in. And, uh, I, I said, you know, I got to do something that I really want to do. And, and, uh, I got an opportunity to create apparel, at a, a store called Nubian Heritage down where the yeah. Barclays Center is right now. It was right across. And uh, Rich Lou Dennis, man, this guy, you know, um, he created um, he created a, a, a shea butter line that, you know, now is in Walmart and, in, in, you know, worldwide shea moisture products. And uh, he, he gave me an opportunity. He bought me a one color press and I was able to convince my buddy, Will Herrera, you know, who's who's doing great, you know, a, a, a brilliant designer now in, in the world of fashion. I got Will to, to come in in the basement with me and we started printing tees. We created uh, the Make Love brand and it was mostly uh, iconic. Yeah, I, iconic imagery, you know, uh, iconography, just um, pop art, you know, on tees and, and found items and thrift items. And, um, you know, that was my foray into the world of fashion. And um, I, I, you know, I kind of hit a, a, a plateau with that and uh, decided to go to Echo Unlimited. So Echo Unlimited was the first um, fashion house I went to just, you know, of course, my love for that brand. I tried to work for a lot of brands that I always admired. And that was, you know, right up there being a graph head, you know, it was, it was triple five. So Echo Unlimited days, then days. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, going to Echo was like, you know, the Marines for design. I actually worked with Raphael and Rex Tanghao, two Pratt brothers, uh, that I actually I used to be boy with Raphael Tanghao, who now I think he's at Louis Vuitton these days, you know, so doing doing really well. And um, I learned a lot from those guys, you know. That's amazing. Yeah, for real. For real, man. It's, <laughs> you just, know, it's, it's like... crazy how the uh, how the journey works and where it leads you. And it's just dope. And then so many names, man, that you threw out there, like some of the homies. Yeah, in yeah. a while, some of the, some mm -hmm. of the homies, you know, shout out to them. Uh, it's just yeah, dope, just dope to see the joint. But just circling back to hip hop, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the role it's played. Obviously, we we talked a lot about, um, you know, how Graf uh, played a major role in your life. Um, but as much as I saw you draw and um, and do graffiti art, you know, like when I think of you, even to this day, of course, I know yeah. your art and stuff. I see the AI art stuff you're doing and all of that. But when I think of you, I think B-Boy first. Yeah. yeah. Day, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's just like, yeah. you know, yeah. from the time we spent the different ciphers and then, um, yeah. you know, even at one point in time, man, when I, I remember driving, oh man, what was that, Spanish Harlem? I drove mm -hmm. you up to, uh, or rode with you up yeah up there so you could, uh, work with the kids and stuff man yeah. but um yeah. i'm just curious to know like how would now how would you say that hip-hop has informed the the art that you make um mm. even outside of things that people don't necessarily associate with hip-hop you know um b-boying for me you know now as i'm older you know i realized that that was uh you know, it was a self soother, you know, it's, it's, it's really about, my, it, it was my mindfulness. Like it, it, it was, uh, the physical to the mental, right? So the physical aspect of, of breaking was like, you know, now is a, is a older, a older, you know, cat, you know, I'm, I'm in the gym, you know, I, I go to the gym and I lift, you know, and it's part of my, it, it helps my mindset, you know, and I, I still break of course and, and exercise, but you know, these things, in, in hindsight, when I think about them now, you know, these are all things that kind of form my fabric and, and hip hop, man. I just I would come home from school. You know, I remember being like, what, third, fourth grade. And I would come home from school. And at the time, Yo! MTV Raps was on from like 3.30 to 4.30. But then Rap City was on from like 4.30 to 6.30 or something like that. So I would watch three hours of hip hop videos every day. You know what I'm saying? Like and uh 
it was just it was just something that it, it was second nature you know it was, it was the culture it, and and i think that hip hop is american culture if you if you really you know look at it in in those terms but um it it completely um carved uh, a a deep line in terms of my path um because i i, I wanted to to work in that world I, I wanted to be adjacent to hip hop and the things that i did and you know dance and art were kind of like you know, hand in hand, you know what I mean? I, I in terms of music, I would, I, I still make beats, man. I, and I mess with my tables, but you know, I, I think the things I wanted to put the 10,000 hours into, you know, were, were related to, to art. And I knew that yeah. dance had a, a short window, you know, if, mm-hmm. unless I was going to, you know, make that a career um, to me, that was more a, a form of self-expression, you know, as opposed to um, something to build my career around. So, no, right, yeah, for sure. Because after forty, you know them knees, honey. Bruh. Them knees, man. I still got my still got all my OGs, man. My tops and all my OGs, man. They, these guys, man, are still kicking ass, man. I'm telling. You, you know, the ice, <laughs> but they but, have yeah. the ice afterwards, okay? Right. Ice, ice <laughs> you know, dance is like playing ball, right? You know, it's it's. Yep. You, certain point where you know you you become a teacher and and your student your apprentice student teacher type of thing. But um, this, I can say the same with, with you, Stan. I think, you know, you was, you was always an MC first, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And and I, I knew that's that's you were in high pursuit of that, you know, in, in all aspects mm-hmm. of your life. And that's why it's a blessing to be sitting here now and, and see has still super locked in what, you know, what drives them. So that's why mm-hmm. I, I tell people all the time, man, you know, my goal is to die surrounded by beautiful paintings and, and continue this art journey as long as I can, you know. Absolutely. You know, to piggyback on that, you have been fortunate enough to have exhibited your work not only in galleries, but in murals, um, you know, in several places, you with businesses, with brands, you've affiliated with brands that you've worked with. Do you remember your first solo show? Wow. I think, um, man, this is the Kobe mural. That's what Ash Society and, and Santa Ana here. Um you know, a lot of brand partnerships and, and working with other companies, man, has always been a way to balance the corporate and the fine art. I think my first solo show, I, I remember just having my first, you know, l- you know, little party at Nubian Heritage, you know, for the release of the apparel and feeling like I had, you know, I brought my parents or something there that, you know, and I, and I felt like, man, I'm really, you know, doing what I said I was going to do, you know, but um, my, one of my first solo shows was was in Manhattan um was in Man- Man- manhattan i can't even remember the name of the space somewhere down uh broadway in uh you know lafayette that world over there or something mm-hmm. and um yeah I, I remember how naive i was about art i thought i was gonna you know sell one two hundred and fifty thousand dollar painting and just be basquiat you know what i mean my ego was like <laughs> out of this i can't put a hat on on my head you know what i mean at the time but um you know that's 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 always fueled me to to kind of stay in hot pursuit. I've learned so much about the business of art, you know, um, over the years and um, the nuance aspects of it, you know, and how to make money outside of shows and and how to kind of keep one foot in the corporate world and, and one foot in the fine art world because of it. Yeah. Definitely. What would you, you know, because one of the things that we pride ourselves in is is teaching visual and performing artists you know, the business of art, because I think Mm -hmm. one disservice that a lot of art institutions do is that they don't prepare students for the business side, like forming a contract, you know, what to ask for. Because a lot of students, you know, we came out working freelance. We don't know what, you know, you don't know your worth or what you should be, you know, so a lot of the things you learn from trial and error. What Mm -hmm. would you say is your biggest lesson? You know, my biggest lesson, um, I read this book called The E-Myth, and um, I, I, I apologize, I can't remember the author, but anyone, you know, that's in the business of art or just if you just are in, in the business of being an entrepreneur, you know, um, The E-Myth is a high one on my recommendation list. Um, I had hit a point, you know, where I was only, you know, selling work sporadically, you know, and kind of... Um, you know, hitting pockets where some I'm, I'm waiting for opportunities to come to me. 
And I really had to get proactive in learning, you know, more. Like you said, we, we're not taught business. I don't know why business classes are not offered, you know, within that art space like they should be, um, even in the high school level. Right. You know, with the with, with that type of education, learning about f financial literacy and different things. But, you know, I, my wife actually got into to real estate. She had um, began investing in, in uh, Chicago because we live in a very expensive state, Southern California down here. So it was in our best interest to try to invest outside the states. And I'm going to just keep it all the way a buck to keep up with her. You know, I had to start reading, you know, or else I was getting left at the, at the dinner table and not knowing what I'm talking about. So, you know, I got I found this book, The E-Myth, and um, it, it really, you know, it, it talks about being a, uh, a manager, a technician and an entrepreneur. And I would consider myself as a technician where I'm I'm going to quit a job to create, you know, a business and then I'm going to work harder than the job that I quit, you know, with limited, you know, uh, gains because I'm just a worker, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out how to put on my manager hat. I had to figure out how to put that entrepreneurial hat on and come up with different ideas and, and be more um, respectful of time and, and, and management and, you know, resources. And uh, after I did that, I was able to, you know, kind of diversify and think more about the resources of income and, and different things like that. And, and, and with my art, I was able to start to go direct to consumer and use these social platforms to sell work and, um, you know, then lead people back to, to my web. And, um, you know, that it's still a growth process. Now I'm in the process of, you know, following in your guys' footsteps, man, just, just creating more content. We're in a space where, you know, being an artist, you have to continually evolve and, and try to find ways to pivot to one, stay relevant and, you know, to two, you know, kind of stay ahead of the curve. So I think reading that book was 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 pivotal. And, and basically, I just say studying in general in, in terms of, you know, learning about business on my own, you know, helped my art career. One thing I will say, um, I'm not so, sorry to skip you. Um, mm -hmm. Going back to talking about the business, one thing that I noticed, especially in the visual art space, you mm -hmm. have artists that want to stay in the fine arts lane, right? Yeah. They, you know, when I when you talk about like when we think about, you know, multiple biz business streams, financial streams, mm -hmm. selling your art, it, whether it's the actual physical, you know, with the framed art pieces, posters, mm -hmm. you have some artists that are like, nah, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, strictly gallery or, so, you know, what what are your what's your take on that? Well, you know, I um. I have a family, you know, I have uh, two youngsters, you know what I mean? My, my, my son is five, my daughter is six. I, I always knew that I didn't want to be a starving artist, you know, and I, I have responsibilities, you know what I mean? And when I was on my own, <laughs> you know what I mean? I could kind of play the game of, of just getting in galleries or being one sided or laser focused on one thing. But I realized, you know, just trying to, to keep the lights on, keep, you know, every everybody else, you know, taken care of. I had to diversify, you know, and it was a decision that I had to make to just be responsible about my, my path. So it, it's a little different, different strokes for different folks. You know what I mean? But for me, that's why it was always important to find or get in a corporate space that was accepting of my fine art, you know, work as well and would allow me to kind of, you know, do two things at once um i might have veered off your question there but no, no, you're but, no you answered it yeah you know i it, for for me it was a, it was a choice to to make sure i had a certain amount of stability you know in my pursuit and um continue to 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 learn and grow in in both in, in on both sides of the fence so for some folks you know Right now, even with the AI work, you know, I get frowned upon for for messing with the AI from some of my traditional artist friends, you know, but it's it's one of those things where I'm looking at at the future. I mean, it's not going to go away. It's already here. So I'm going to embrace it fully. Yeah. And take advantage, because I think even as black folks, we have to we have to some of us have to jump out there and get on the ledge, man, to 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 make sure we're in the conversation, because all of these yeah. things are coming at such rapid speed you know it, it it takes some of us to dig in and, and make sure we're we're in that conversation and so far you know i've been able to you know already begin to work work within that space so yeah no for sure man um real quick uh for those just tuning in uh we are talking with our good brother tony concept an amazing uh artist on so many levels 
Um, and you're listening to season four of Artistry, which is crazy to me. We're four, we're four seasons in. Quick shout out real quick uh, before we jump into these other questions. Um, shout out to Words, Beats, and Life. Um, you know, Words, Beats, and Life is the official sponsor of Artistry season four. And uh, they are doing great work. We were talking before I was uh, wanted to point out when we were talking about the lack of um, business education at art schools, like around the arts. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Words, Beats, and Life, who's not only uh, in their academy that they do teaching um, the various forms of art um, through hip hop, through the lens of hip hop, but they are also offering business classes as well, you know? So um, shout out to them, man, they're doing the work. Um, and of course, thanks for your support of the channel and the, the podcast. So on that note, let's uh, talk about Hold up. Air, air horns for the air horns for season four. Know, right? Hold on. That's fire. Sure. But yeah, man, um, a shout out to, um, that's what's up. Thank you, Blackheart. He's been a listener since season one. We appreciate the love, good brother. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, um, so once again, we're talking with Tony Concept. Um, you know, as a fellow member of the Brotherhood of Fatherhood, um, mm -hmm. you being a father too, I'm always interested to know how, um, how fatherhood has mm -hmm. changed you as an artist or changed your art. Oh man, I I can't I can't thank the Most High enough, you know, for my my kids. You know, what I mean, like I, I just you know I it, it's the, the the greatest blessing. You know, what I mean, the greatest blessing that ever you know uh, happened to me, man. And and you know, of course, man, God bless to you and your 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 queen. You know, your your beautiful family, man. Your queen and and how you how you've managed to to keep you know your family intact. I think, you know, the, the main thing I can say about how it's affected my artwork is uh, my daughter, as soon as she was born, man, I, I just, uh, I brought her outside with me and I would throw crayons on the ground or, or paint on the ground and, you know, put a canvas up in front of her and uh, watching her paint, you know, in, in her freeness and her just, you know, her innocence has actually helped bring me back to uh freeing up myself you know what i mean in terms of in terms of the work where i was taking things a little too seriously so um you know she's greatly inspired me and, and greatly influenced me to look at art you know um in a playful way you know and, and and that and i think i was reading in rick rubin's book you know he opens up his book talking about how you know we create in, in playfulness. So sometimes you have to kind of lighten the load. And if you want to be creative, any a, a, a tip to the creators out there, if you're getting in a slump, just play around with something. You know what I mean? Just don't put as much emphasis on what the outcome of something is going to be. Just experiment. And I think that's, you know, a direct result for my kids. Outside of um, <clears throat> outside of that, you know, um, you know, I've... Um, I never thought about mortality or anything, you know what I'm saying? Before before I had my kids and mm -hmm. legacy and generational uh, curses and all of these different things. I never thought about any of that stuff until, you know, I had these two uh, perfect children, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and now um, it's made me, you know, it, it's made me far more appreciative. And um, I think I'm really more inspired by setting up an environment for them to thrive you know what i'm saying like just just for them to walk around the, the the home you know and have we have artwork in every corner of the house you know what i mean and i i just think to myself man if i could have grew up and just had like a kahende wiley on the wall or whatever you know i don't have a real kahende wiley i got a bootleg one but you know <laughs> Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I was to say, but, word? Nah, yeah, yeah. I, I stretched the towel from the from the gift shop. You know what I'm saying? It's a poor man's Kehinde, you know what I mean? Right. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it feels like a, a, a real huxtable vibe, man, because I know they're getting some culture with them. You know what I mean? And that's very important to me, man, just to see, even bringing other creative people around them. You know, salute to their godmother, Lee Bond. You know, she, you know, I got people, a little tribe of people that are creatives and, can expose them to, to you know, uh, the world of art in, in a way that I think is going to be very enriching for them, you know? Yeah. Sure, man. 
And we have a five year old too, so we gotta we gotta Sound get like play, play dates. Date. We gotta get play dates. Man, you already know they gotta kick it. You know what I'm saying? They gotta <laughs> kick it. My son, my son Marcy, he's gonna get, try to just get on the roadblocks real quick. You know what I'm saying? But you know that's his his steez, man. You know he on roadblocks. You know, but yeah. Uh, but I yeah, my... she's a she's mm-hmm. a gamer and the youngest, yeah. but she's an artist too. Both of them, they yeah. love art. It's it's great to see, like you said, like right. watching them develop and work on it, like. Destiny, without even, you know, guiding her, she's like, she stays within the line. She's yeah. like, you know, she's very meticulous like that. And Serenity, mm-hmm. like, she's doing comic characters and anime mm-hmm. and manga. Developed so. her own style Develop of illustration, her, right. which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, so. mm-hmm. watching her go from, like, mimicking other people's styles to figuring out her own style. And, like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's just dope um, to see, man. It's like, it's like with art... Um, you don't always hear people outside of art refer to it this way, but with like amongst artists, it's like when you figure out your style, it's like finding your voice, your so, language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man. And real quick, which made me think of um, shout out to uh, a really dope um, MC who's a professor. Oh my God, I know her name. I'm blacking out on Black Oh Samus. Oh, Samus. Uh, shout out to Samus. Um, Mm -hmm. who's a professor now, um, I think at Brown. Um, But I took, uh, we were at BlurCon one year and um, the sister Samus was talking about something on stage about um, artists and in particular writing. Um, Mm -hmm. And she was just saying that because she didn't see herself in certain stories or people that Mm -hmm. look like her, and this all ties Mm -hmm. in with what you were saying about having that work in your home for your kids Mm -hmm. to see, um, uh-huh. She was saying that she basically was writing herself out of her own story because she there you go. see yep. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I pulled my daughter in during that moment, like, yo, you need mm-hmm. to listen. Because mm-hmm. uh, this, you know, being in the anime, sometimes, you know, a lot of what they're seeing does not look like them. Um, and yep. So, yeah, yep. just we, we made a real conscious effort to talk to her about that and the importance of that as an artist, um, because, you know, at some point in time, other people are going to be looking at your work. And if you don't, if they don't see a little bit of you in your work, um, it's going to mm-hmm. be even harder for them to find themselves. You know what I mean? A lot of times, right. um, you know, so it, man, yeah. my, my sister, man, says something. She gave me some game the other day and she, you know, we was, I think we was even arguing about something and she, she made the comment like, you know, this, the home is, the home is the real world for training the, your kids. You know what I mean? And the outside world is like the fake world, you know, more or less. Mm-hmm. But this is the real training ground, you know what I mean, for, for what's outside. And I, I really take that to heart, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, and, and 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 just to your point, what you were just saying, man, it, it's – I worry about that sometimes. Even being in, in SoCal, which is a little cultural desert, you know, it's not the same as being in the Brooklyn, you know, in that in that type of vibe, man. I. I try to make sure I give them as much game in, in here as I can, you know, about themselves and about the creative. That's, you know, kind of feed that creative nature, man. So salute to your baby girl, man, getting her. her man, we, we need some, you know, we need some more designers, man. We need to take manga over, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's that's the plan that's the plan on scholarship right right that part too You're manifesting it that's happening it's already in the in the, in the book right we claiming mm-hmm. it yeah man um, you you spoke about like um developing your style mm-hmm. so well, let's talk about trap art how did that come mm-hmm. to be you know um you know trap art you know is um Growing up in the Carolinas, um, you know, I um, I think it's my, my growing up in the Carolinas, um, you know, I I was connected to a whole populace of folks, you know what I mean, and my my homies and my friends, and I always felt like uh, you know tethered to a world that was different than the world of of the the art world and the contemporary art and different things like that. So I always felt like I had a responsibility to represent. You know what I'm saying? For my homeboys and my partners and different things like that. And um, you know, the trap lingo, the 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 word the trap, you know, I could easily say, you know, uh, 
I was raised in and around, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, the the trap, quote unquote, even the, the squarest cat in the hood, you know, understands the lingo of the trap, you know what I mean? Because they cousins, uncles, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Homies are, are, are all in that, um, you know, all in that nucleus, right? So I just wanted to paint iconic images and do iconic images that I wanted to see in a gallery that I never thought you know, were represented. Like, I was like, you know, I think it started off with, um, you know, Lisa Bonet, you know, like, um, and, and you know, I was like, well, if Andy Warhol has, you know, uh, Marilyn Monroe, we got Lisa Bonet, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like our, like, our link. This is probably, you know, before Beyonce or whatever, you know, we have our own cultural icons that mm -hmm. are big and, and have great meaning to, to us, our aunties, grannies and, and the like. So it was it started there, man, just trying to go out in the street and paint, you know, Eddie Murphy from, um, you know, coming to America. You know, that was one of, the, one of the first ones I did. And it was crazy because when I started putting these images in the street, I didn't realize, like, how many people outside of who I thought they were for related to it. You know what I mean? Or could relate to those 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 images. So that's really in a nutshell, how I started doing trap art, you know, it was really about mixing, I guess, hood culture, you know, with, with the art world and, and, you know, that hashtag kind of like grew on its own, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I, I saw a lot of younger kids, you know, take to it and um, come up with their own versions, you know, are the same. That's so dope. That's so dope, man. Yeah, I know um, earlier you, um, you know, you were referencing God when you're talking about your children and um, your blood, mm -hmm. the blessings that they are, um, which made me uh, think like, you know, how does, how do you feel like your, your faith has impacted your work? Man, you know, um, man, I, I tell you what, you know, a God is my bodyguard. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I say that because, you know, this, there's religion and there's spirituality, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I've been trying to stay as closely connected to my faith as possible because I think life is a it's a real growth. It's a it's a constant learning journey. And, and without that spiritual connection, you know, you can get lost in the sauce real easily, man. It's a treacherous world we live in, man, right now, you know, so um, having that that spiritual connection has always been been there and the reason why it's been so strong for me is because there's been times where I've created things, creative artwork, and I knew it didn't come from me. I knew it had to come from a higher place. So, you know, with that, that being said, you know, um, I think the most high is the, as the creator, the creator of the birds, the trees, the sun, the moon, you know, if you look in a tree outside, this tree has, you know, 3000 shades of green in it. And I'm sitting here with my paintbrush trying to just, create some semblance of one or two of those greens you know what i mean so i think as creators like you know as artists we're intrinsically trying to chase the creator you know we're, we're we're trying to um tap into the god within us so you know for me you know my faith and the spiritual journey is, is very important because you know being able to create something from nothing is a blessing you know and i don't want to take that for granted mm -hmm. no for sure for sure um, shout out to Blackheart in the comments. He dropped this one in there. You know, just talking about um, um, trap wave, bro. That's voice. what's up. Mm hmm. Yeah, and again, that's like you know, that's being connected to the trap. Like you know, we we all connected, man, and we want to bring our piece to another genre. So you know, I think Ti coined the term the trap. You know what I'm saying? And, and we can go on a whole conversation about that, but. <laughs> But yeah, for for those of us who you know, you know, may have may not been involved in, in in different things, we know somebody that's been involved in different things and have close proximity to it, man. And I think that's what we're trying to impart in the things we create. So salute to that. I got to hear some of that trap wave. You already know. Yeah, man. That's what's, <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. So, um, real quick, I know we were talking about like you know um, our faith, our children. Um, mm -hmm impact uh our work and different things um and then obviously you know we started the show talking about our relationship and how we've inspired each other you know how we look to you and the things you're doing and how inspirational has been to us and vice versa 
uh, vice versa. But um, but I also wanted to talk about uh, someone that we all knew um, as well who went to Pratt with us. And I know um, that you mentioned him in an interview and, um, and how he affected you and how his loss impacted us as well. Uh, but yeah, if you could speak a little bit about Rob, about Roger, Rob yeah. Jones, if you don't mind, you know, what I mean? man, man, Rob Jones, blessings all the way, man. So, uh, just to give context, you know, my my brethren, uh, Rob Jones from Inglewood, Inglewood, California. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he he was affiliated, you know, to some degree. You know what I mean? In a whole another world, and and he made his way out of that world in Inglewood and, and and found his way all the way to Pratt Institute. And um, you know, this was the type of brother, man, that would just, you know. He's the type of cat that would knock on my door, um, you know, on a Saturday morning, you know what I'm saying? Like seven in the morning on a Saturday, you know, you don't have to work. And I open the door and he got a spliff in his hand and he just walks past me, sits on my couch and just sparks a spliff, says nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I get in the bed, put the covers back over my head. Then his hand come. I grab the spliff and we smoke. Look, and and then without saying a word, you know, for 30 minutes, he just leaves. And then I look, you know, I wake up, you know, and, and ha the rest of the spliff is sitting there that w in which he left for me. You know what I mean? So he was one of them type of dudes, man. And uh, he was a fine artist. And, um, you know, we um, we would always talk about making it, you know, big together in the world of fine art. And, you um, you know, we had big lofty conversations and aspirations about, you know, how we were going to take over this game. And he subsequently was, uh, you know, shot by the police on going. He went home for, for the summer, uh, our first year. And, um, you know, he had some mental issues, you know, that that kind of ensued, which led to him, you know, being uh, murdered by the police in his home. And, um, you know, to this day, it, it's it, it's one of the batteries in my back to never, you know, give up on my aspirations in the art game. You know, it, it's it's always going to be one of those voices in the back of my head to tell me to keep going when I hit points where, you know, I'm in the studio and I don't have it or I don't feel like it's going well. I try to, you know, speak to him and, and my ancestors, you know, what I mean, to make sure I stay tapped in with him. He's tattooed on my body. You know what I'm saying? And uh you know, he was just, um, you know, one of the ones, man, that that the most high will place in your life to give you enough game to, to to keep you going, you know, through through a lot of different things. I think certain people are just here, um, you know, to serve others. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's kind of like uh, I, I think, you know, it, it was with, with Rob. So he's still a, a great inspiration. And uh, in a lot of my work his number was 44 his basketball number was 44 and i i put a lot of easter eggs in the art whether it be four x's or mm -hmm. or um you know like sequences of four in the work that that um you know only i really uh understand um but mm -hmm. you know that was just that's somebody that is still a voice in my head you know and uh mm -hmm. i try to communicate with him when i can reach him you know what i mean um in, in an incredible art. It's a tribute to how you are able to incorporate like his number. And, you know, Stan and I, we were talking, I, you know, we read the article and I was like, wow, you know, we have fond memories. Like Stan tells me your stories all the time of you guys all hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I always think about the time I had to go to court, uh, fight this ticket because of this new. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like. It was a, a, a little turnstile incident. Like, bro, yeah. I had money, son. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I trip, Shout out to the G train. <laughs> yeah, the G train, you know, like, you know. It's crazy too, man, because, you know, like uh, I, I never thought I would, I found myself painting a mural in Inglewood at the Inglewood store. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Steve. He had the Inglewood store. He's got an Inglewood clothing line, a clothing brand. And I did an Inglewood mural in Inglewood. And I was sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Communicating with him the whole time. And he brought me to the hood, you know, and that's just how, how manifestation is. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he wanted to show me his set, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. And uh, that that's why I think to anyone out there listening, you know, it's important to stay tapped in and connected to your loved ones. You know, you know, even if the, the time that you have with them is short, you know what I'm saying? They can impact you tremendously. And, and he was one of them guys, man. You know what I mean? That, that, that definitely impacted me 
And um, do you think that's you know, why you moved to California, subconsciously or consciously? Man, you know, um, I, I I think meeting him, I knew that um, meeting him and my but my, my my homie Chaz, man, shout out to my man Quinn from the Bay Area. Like a lot of the cats that I met from Cali, Cali. I just knew I had the. I'm one of them guys. Was like, I gotta go do that. You know what I mean? And uh, I had it kind of, you know, in my mind in going to New York. I, I knew I was gonna be in New York for an, a certain amount of time, and I was gonna be on the West Coast for a certain amount of time without even, without even, um, you know, um, without even visiting or, or knowing about it. You know what I mean? It, I think it was just. Yo, them dudes from Souls of Mischief look so cool, yo. I'm gonna have to go out there and see what they're doing out there, and you know the far side and all of that, man. So it was one of them things, man. But now I'm I've learned a lot about the politics out here, man. There's a lot of politics, you know, with the gang culture, and and there's a lot of nuance to our neighborhoods in in California, you know, Harlem, New York, Brooklyn, and New Orleans. Um, I'm I'm interested in the black experience in all of those places, especially as a black man. You know. Wow. Speaking of black man meeting a first lady, Michelle <laughs> Obama. So mm -hmm. can we? Can you have the picture? Oh yeah, I got, you know I got to so, keep it up. My favorite picture in the world, story. man. Yeah, you know. I'm just saying. I mean, she all hugged up on you I'm, and I'm everything. Gonna I'm gonna take us off so we can just focus <laughs> on that glorious <laughs> moment real quick. Hold up. I was Hold like, on. let me find out. Yeah, my wife said she was all up on me a little something, you know what I'm saying? But she was. <laughs> nah, man. I'm going to tell everybody out there, man, this is the, this is a brilliant, um, you know, when, when I met uh, Michelle Obama, man, um, I remember they tell, you know, there was so much security, right? And they're telling us, uh, you know, you don't touch her, you know, don't... Um, you know, don't get too close and, and different things. And, you know, it was kind of polarizing, you know, in, in a sense. And, uh, you know, when I met her, you know, we just looked at each other and uh, I, I was like, you know, I, I was going to bring it in. But I was like, I, I can't, you know, I can't do too much. You know what I'm saying? And she was, uh, she was just a super down to earth, real human being. And, and I think the most important thing I could tell people, man, is like we got to stop creating space between ourselves and these people that we see on TV are in elevated, you know, in elevated places. You know what I mean? Because the reality of it is, is you know, they they they're the same as us. You know, there's just a lot of extra stuff around these people. You know what I'm saying? And to create that distance and uh, that conversation. And, you know, we talked about Charleston because she actually she said she was just in Charleston with Bill Murray uh kicking it you know she flexed on me right <laughs> and i was talking about you know i was talking about my mom's but um that conversation really made me um more comfortable you know with with being able to speak to anyone you know what i'm saying because you realize you know there's there's th that distance that we put you know that you know this you know jay-z has the same thoughts you do you know what i'm saying beyonce you know she probably you know then sat and ate a bag of chips and watched the movie the same way you do on a sunday you feel me like yeah. we just have to um sometimes get over ourselves and, and un you know and, and uh understand that you know we're we're so we're far closer than than we think that we are you know what i'm saying with some folks You know, we um, earlier in the show, we talked about AI and, you know, love or hate it. Some, you know, it's here. It's arrived. Mm -hmm. um, you have been doing a lot of work in the AI space as well as working with, um, uh, you know, several different mediums. Mm -hmm. So what is your take on AI um, as far as in the creative space? You know, this is one that um, my brother Micah Blacklight and I, we go back and forth feverishly on. He's a traditional artist that feels like, you know, there's so much plagiarism in the AI. It's, it's really hard for him to take on. And I understand with me understanding this. Um, the thing about the AI for me, man, is. Um, I'll, I'll give you I'll give it I'll give you the story, man, this this kid, he um, he follows me and, uh, you know, he, he was in a wheelchair and he does really great pop art, right? You know what I'm saying? 
And um, when I started doing the AI, he DM me and, and he showed me some of the AI work that he did. And he showed me these beautiful images of wheelchairs and like these incredible spaces, botanical spaces and and beautiful. It was just like me looking inside of his mind, you know what I'm saying? And, and seeing a different chamber of his thoughts, you know, connected to his affinity and his love and how he saw his chair. And um, to me, that is what's interesting about AI. It's It's allowing people to go deeper into their creative pockets. It's allowing people to um, express themselves in ways they were incapable of, you know, due to either resources or like, uh, you know, learning or ability, you know, but at the same time, it's like when Fruity Loops came out or when, you know, the beat machine came out and now you're starting to see less people playing instruments, you know, um, it's a logical progression I think you have to be morally responsible with it. Um, but I'm more intrigued on, I think when AI came out, my first thought was the movies are going to get better and the fashion is going to get better in one year. You know what I mean? Right. It's just too much. It's like a creative influx. So I'm on the fence in terms of using it as a tool, you know, and calling it my personal artwork, but I, I am in alignment with it as using it as a, a tool of exploration. And that's where I've been having the most, you know, fun and, and uh, the most um, doing the most interesting work, you know, exploratory work with it and, you know, working with some, some brands. And I'm I actually working on a really big project right now. I'm excited about, um, you know, just because of, you know, taking the, the leap and trying to learn how to, you know, use, use the platforms. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You know, and as uh, you mentioned, you know, having a moral compass when working with this, do you feel that the government should get involved and sort of regulate certain things? Man, that one is, I think, it. you know, it's hard for me to say because usually when the government gets involved, it's not the business, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, if I if I if I channel Micah's voice right now, you know, there has to be protections for people in their original art. You know, there has to be some type of limit uh, to what, you know, I, I've had, you know, people already take the work that I've created and recreate, you know, new work with it already. You know, but uh, I think for me coming from the world of fashion where it's all kind of you still like an artist to create the next season, you know, it you're borrowing lending from a lot of different things. I think. Um, I think it's it's not going to take the government. I think it's going to be more creative usage points, you know, um, like in in regards to music AI. I was talking to my buddy who's working with Grimes, the artist Grimes, and basically she's allowing a whole um, she's allowing her fans to use her voice to make their own songs. You know what I'm saying? Um, but of course, like the way it's worked out, there's a percentage that goes back to her. And there's some parameters that she set, you know, for them using her voice. But I think that's where we have to focus on. We have to focus on, you know, figuring out a way to use it that everyone's beneficial. Um, but I don't know if if the government, you know, and in, 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 in figuring, you know, getting them involved is, you know, where where I'm at. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, that, that it's a tough one for me. Yeah. I feel like it's inevitable, right? Like that that's mm -hmm. gonna happen at some point. Um, this is interesting with uh yep. one of our viewers just pointed out, just saying how they have a, a fellow artist friend who um uses AI to give her ideas on, mm -hmm. on on how to paint or draw her scene, um, but she won't use it to create, but more so to inspire her visual. You and know, so I'm for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm for that 1000%. You know, I, I've yet to, to create something in AI that I wanted to paint just yet, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. coming up with some different ideas and, you know, like, um, I love, you know, my wife and I, we've implemented chat GPT in kind of daily usage, you know, in terms of communication, I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, where, where it gets tricky is like, I was listening to, um, I was listening to, I think, uh, Dion Cole, the comedian, talk about how, you know, he had, you know, AI write him a whole script or something like that, you know, connected to the writer's strike. You know, 
I'm not really into AI taking jobs from people. I think we need to educate folks and implement it into the process of what we're already doing. I don't think AI should should be able to come in and replace someone, um, you know, similar to how now AI has been implemented into Photoshop, which I think is dope. You know what I mean? I don't want to spend 30 minutes looking for some grass to put behind something when I can just AI the grass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, I think that application makes sense to me. Um, but, but again, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not into it taken, you know, from someone. And the same thing was to be said with WordPress. When WordPress came out, like all of the web designers were like, well, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? But now we see that, you know, there's still people learning how to build front end web. And there's people who, you know, I just need to create a site to sell my kids, you know, Girl Scout cookies on and using WordPress. So right. that's, that's what I think is going to happen with the AI application. It's still going to be, it's going to work on both sides. For sure, man. For sure. Um, I know we got to get out of here soon, but uh, I wanted to first, uh, before we get to these rapid fire questions, uh, I wanted to shout out to some of the people you've mentioned and some of the companies you mentioned, because it all ties in the past guests. So first of all, shout out to all of our past guests who are Pratt alumni. You know what I mean? You know, we got to rap. You know? Also, Shout out to um, shout out to Alan Cole, one of our past guests who uh, works with WordPress and has done a lot of templates for them. Um, and of course, shout, uh, shout out to Micah Black, like also a former guest of the show. Yes, yeah, season two. Big Check inspiration, my guy. Big big guy. Yeah. Big inspiration. To me. Yeah, man, that's the homie, man. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So yeah, so let's uh, get into these rapid fire joints. Uh, so Sorry in we, advance. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so this is what, what we do to wrap up the show. Um, we have some rapid fire questions that we want to ask you. And so it's either like this or that, or you have one choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, so you want to go with the first one? Um, yeah. And some are light and some are more like, oh, why you do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, so we're going to start light. You know, I'm going to come in on this one right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we're starting yeah. off light. Favorite color and why? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with turquoise. You know what I mean? It's just like a it's the color of the clear water in the Bahamas. You know what I mean? That's what I want to be. Yeah. And the reason why we wanted to ask that because looking at your art, there's clearly a theme. There's mm -hmm. some colors that you use more frequently than yeah, others. So I was just interested. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Next one. Now I know you from the South. You there a you son go. of the South. Yeah. And, and you and you like to cook. <laughs> so. Seafood gumbo, yeah, shrimp and grits. Lord have mercy, you know it's the, the, the seafood gumbo. If y'all want to get a good, quick fifteen minute gumbo recipe, go to my IG. I got you. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I just got to make it quick. You feel me? <laughs> now, do you do a vegan version? Because we don't eat. You know. Now, see, you, you can you can do a ve you can do a vegan version of the gumbo for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. I'm sure there's a vegan sausage. That's going to be the main thing that you got to do. And you get, you could probably, there's got to be some, uh, you know, it's all about the Tony Catcheries though. You know what I mean? The seasoning, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah. sure I'm going to have to work on that, that recipe for y'all though. I got all you. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, you keep us like moving. I said, we're coming in December. We're coming in December. Right. right. Say less. Say less. All right. <laughs> all right. So next one is, uh, which artist do you most identify with style wise? Uh, Renee Magritte. Banks, mm -hmm. Warhol, or Basquiat, and why? Man, you know, I'm I'm gonna have to give it to John Michelle. Identify with him style wise because he was the first to write on, you know, write messaging on on cam on paintings. And to this day, if you if you do that, you're biting his style. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I do do a lot of written messaging, and I try to do in the form of logos and and icon iconography. So I'm gonna go with the great. John Michelle Basquiat, you know, South Passe. South Passe. Brother. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, as a comic book lover, comic book head, again, mm -hmm. style wise, Black Panther or Spider Man? Mm -hmm. She tries to war. Man, man. Yo, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with it. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Mm, dang. I'm going to have to go with it. I'm gonna get you out. I'm gonna get you out. You know, there's a lot of Spider-Man. 
to choose from. <laughs> right. yeah, Spider Verse. Yeah. I'm gonna just go with the Spider Verse just because. Uh, look, look, I'm gonna have to go Spider Verse, man, because that was my. I was, I was, yo, I was my my son right now would smack me if I don't say Spider Man. So you know, what I'm saying? I gotta yeah. go. He got the new Spider Man's coming out. It's out today. today no, tomorrow. 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 Yeah, yeah. man. Miles, man. You know what I'm saying? Miles That's what it is. Yep. All right, last All right, one. Last one. There we go. <laughs> this is for uh, the dancer in you and music. Okay. In you. So house music. So here your choices are: deep inside. Or follow, mm-hmm. or follow me. I'm gonna go with deep inside. You know what I'm saying? Because deep inside is gonna put me in the back by the speaker. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In in my bag where I'm I'm not worried about nobody else. But follow me. I'm I'm holding hands with everybody. And you know what I'm saying? And we <laughs> we getting it in together. But deep inside is more my bag because I like to get tucked away and just get really into the music. Man, it's one of the ones. Um, let me give one thing before we go, man. I got to tell you, man, one of the illest things I ever seen in my life. I can't remember if this was, if this was your birthday or whatever it was. And I don't remember where we was at, but Stan wrote a rap for you. That was like, I think he spit this. I, I can't remember where we was at. I don't know if it was your born day or was or what it was, but you know, this is probably before y'all was like married or whatever. You know what I mean? But when I he spit this rap for you, and I, I feel like everybody in the joint, like they might have teared, like boarded up or something like that. Wow. But when I saw that and I heard what he said to you, and I saw I, I was looking at you know you and 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 I, I saw his sincerity, you know what I mean? It stuck with me to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the way I said, man. That's the way I want to you know um, covet my queen. You know what I'm saying? And I think man, you a teacher. And I salute you for for how you you know you build your family and to see y'all together doing what you do right now. That's what life is about more than the monetary and all these other things that we yeah. we have, man. I think that's one of the most important that finding that connection. I'm thankful to have that connection. You know what I'm saying? Even though um, my old lady probably say I get on her nerves. You know what I mean? I'm 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 thankful to have that. But but I definitely look to you, man, for for uh, uh you know. The way you move, man. So I salute you and, and God bless y'all to y'all foundation. You know what I mean? I had to I had to tell her. I wish I knew the, the venue and I can't remember, but I, I just remember that's one of the memories in my my mind that stuck out, man. And you know, appreciate thank, it, we appreciate that and we receive that. Thank mm-hmm. you. We, and we still together. We still together. <laughs> <laughs> there you we go. ain't gotten tired of me yet. Let me, let me tell you something. I don't even know if I told, I don't even think I told this to Shell yesterday. <laughs> man, I was so ready because when the tour ended, man, um, you know, I've been on tour since like May 4th, just got I home around 11. Yeah. While I was at the airport, um, while I was at the airport, they offered like three or four hundred dollars to um to take a later flight. It was mm-hmm. like just an hour later, but a couple hundred yep. dollars. Yep. They come back through and they was like, Man, now we got five hundred. Oh, they up in the ante. Uh catch this five PM. Right. By the time I got on the plane, they still make an office. Man, they yeah. like fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, for you to catch yeah. the seven p.m. joint. Yeah, right. I was so ready to see my family, bro. Yeah, that I, and that's I what it is. Like, that's good. what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, let and click. Let me be clear yeah. though. I was thinking like even off tour with the money yeah. in my pocket, yeah. I can use some more bread. I already know. I already but know. When you were saying about like you know money aside and what's really yep. important, like y'all was that's ready what it to see is, my man. family. Like now, you, you could be thinking to yourself, man, I, I could catch the kids before they go to sleep or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Man. So salute to you for that. And you know, if you would have got the bread, you would have had to spend it on her anyway. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so you know, this, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, you're gonna be all right though, because you know, <laughs> taking the scenes Word. women in hip hop joint on Sunday night. Yeah. There you go. With MC Light behind my man, Light, yeah. man. Yeah. T- Man, I wanted it, man. Light had the ill. She had the cut. She had the, the yes, steam. Yes, that mushroom, honey. Light yeah, had the best can't mushroom. Wait. Hands down. Can't you know wait. what I'm saying? Super fly. Word. Yo, Tony, thank you. Man, you know, thank and I remember, you. remember, too, you know, you've been witness to it 
for us being together from the beginning and mm -hmm. got to witness the wedding. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank mm -hmm. you for, you know, for your art. Thank you for your time. Yeah. You know, thank you for sharing this. I mean, the reason why, again, we do this is because we want people to really know the real. Because a yeah. lot of interviews, they're not going to talk about all this, you know, limited mm -hmm. time, resources, whatever. But we thank you for taking the time to share it with us. Oh, um, man. And again, I, I just thank you for, you know, mo most importantly, our, our fellowship, you know, and just knowing y'all through this uh, journey. And we got way more to go. So, again, yeah. salute to y'all and continue blessings in abundance to you and the family. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Anything you want to plug before you go or are you good? Man, you know, I got a new YouTube. Um, Life is art is is the mission. I'm still trying to like kind of put the you know put put the uh, the mission together. You know, so subscribe to the YouTube. That's Tony underscore CNCP. Um, I got a new IG, of course. That's on the ticker down there. Just check out the work, man. Stop by and say what's up. Um, and yeah, man, that's it, man. Life is art, man. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be sure to uh, add the YouTube channel to the link of this video i mean to the description of mm -hmm. this video and uh for those of you um listening to the podcast be sure to check out the information he just gave you so you can learn more about our good brother uh, brother tony concept everybody yeah i'm gonna get off of here and i'm gonna listen to some substantial and new jobbies i got you know in the background <laughs> right? just go ahead and put a put that on for a spin you know what i mean all right that's what's that's... up man appreciate you brother man god bless y'all all right thank you so much peace everyone All right, folks, thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Artistry, man. It feels good to be back. Make sure that y'all look out for the next few episodes. Who we got next week? Next week, we have MC Javier Starks. Yeah, man, shout out to Javier Starks, talented MC, even better brother, also an athlete as well. Um, yeah, man, we'll learn more about him next week. Shout out to our sponsor,